inscribed in the forecourt of Apollo's ancient sanctuary, the simple Greek phrase, Know thee seoton, or know thyself, echoes down the centuries. A timeless call to self-understanding that bears an urgent relevance for our contemporary world. As we navigate an increasingly complex and interconnected global society, it is crucial that we heed this call, not only to understand ourselves as individuals, but also to comprehend our collective identity as the inheritors of Western civilization. Today, we find ourselves in the throes of a troubling paradox. On one hand, our society boasts unprecedented technological advancement and material prosperity, a testament to the rational thinking and entrepreneurial spirit that were nurtured by the foundational principles of our civilization. On the other hand, we are grappling with an alarming rise in self-doubt and self-denigration, a rejection of the values and achievements that define our shared heritage. This growing disdain for our own cultural legacy mirrors, in many ways, the moral and intellectual decline that precipitated the collapse of the Roman Empire. As Rome distanced itself from its founding principles, it fell into a spiral of internal decay, marked by corruption, social discord, and a loss of collective purpose. We must learn from this historical lesson, lest we repeat it. The antidote to our self-inflicted cultural malaise, I propose, lies within the very heart of our threatened heritage, the great books of the Western world. These texts, from Plato to Shakespeare, from Augustine to Locke, are repositories of wisdom and insight, encompassing centuries of human experience and contemplation. They ask the deepest questions about human nature, morality, society, and the cosmos, fostering a spirit of intellectual curiosity and rigorous reasoning that can empower us to navigate our modern challenges. More than just books, they are conversations across time, inviting us to engage with the greatest minds and ideas of our civilization. By reading and reflecting on these works, we can rekindle our appreciation for the richness of our cultural legacy, reinvigorating our sense of identity and purpose. The journey towards knowing thyself is not merely an introspective endeavor, but an exploration of the values, ideals, and insights that have shaped our civilization. Let us take up this journey with a sense of urgency and purpose, seeking not only self-understanding but a renewed appreciation for our collective heritage. In the wisdom of the ages, we may yet find the inspiration to build a more confident and resilient civilization, capable of meeting the future with courage and optimism. The Great Books of the Western World Their History, Purpose and Relevance in the Modern Age the Great Books of the Western World is a testament to the profound impact of written works on the shaping of Western thought and culture. This monumental collection, conceived and edited by Robert Hutchins and Mortimer J. Adler and published by Encyclopedia Britannica in 1952, aimed to encapsulate the canonical texts that constitute the Western intellectual tradition history. In the early 20th century, there was a growing sentiment that higher education in America had become overly specialized, neglecting the broader curriculum essential for a well-rounded understanding of the world. Hutchins, who was then the president of the University of Chicago, and Adler, a philosopher and educator, believed that a return to the classics was the antidote. Their ambitious project aimed to compile the foundational texts of Western civilization into one comprehensive set. The resulting 54-volume collection ranged from the ancient works of Homer to 20th century writings. It encompassed a wide array of disciplines, including literature, philosophy, science, politics, and more. Purpose 1. A Core Curriculum Hutchins and Adler's central belief was that these great books formed a core curriculum for anyone seeking a genuine education. They argued that a true understanding of contemporary society and thought could only be gained by delving into its origins. 2. Encouraging critical thought. Instead of just assimilating information, the Great Book's approach emphasized active reading and critical thinking. Adler developed a method of reading, termed syntopical reading, 
which involved reading multiple works on the same topic and analyzing them comparatively. This approach was intended to enable readers to understand concepts deeply and from multiple perspectives. 3. Democratic Ideals The editors believed that the ideas contained within the great books were not just for scholars, but for everyone. They saw a democratic ideal in this, asserting that to preserve a democratic society, its citizens must be well-informed, critical thinkers who understand the philosophical underpinnings of their culture. 4. Preserving Intellectual Heritage The great books were seen as a way to safeguard the intellectual heritage of the West. By compiling these works into a single collection, they hoped to ensure that future generations would have access to this rich tapestry of thought. Relevance in the modern age. Given the rapid changes in the global landscape, the deluge of information in the digital age, and the challenges of the 21st century, the great books might seem antiquated to some. However, their utility is arguably more profound now than ever. 1. Navigating information overload. In a world saturated with information, the ability to think critically is paramount. The great books with their emphasis on analytical and comparative reading, equip readers with tools to discern quality information from the noise. 2. Understanding cultural roots In an increasingly globalised world, understanding one's cultural roots provides a sense of identity and grounding. The great books offer insight into the foundational ideas that have shaped Western societies helping individuals comprehend the historical and philosophical context of contemporary issues. 3. Fostering interdisciplinary thought. The problems of the 21st century are multifaceted and require interdisciplinary solutions. The great books, with their wide range of disciplines and ideas, encourage holistic thinking. A reader is prompted to make connections between, say, literature and science or philosophy and politics, nurturing a well-rounded worldview. 4. Promoting civil discourse. In an age marked by polarization and echo chambers, engaging with diverse ideas from the past can cultivate tolerance and open-mindedness. Understanding and grappling with differing perspectives within the great books can foster more informed and respectful modern-day discussions. 5. Personal growth and reflection. Beyond their societal implications, the great books provide a means for personal introspection. They deal with timeless themes of human existence, from love and sacrifice to morality and purpose. Engaging with these texts can prompt profound personal reflection, aiding individuals in their quests for meaning and understanding. Conclusion The Great Books of the Western World is more than just a collection of influential texts. It is a curated journey through the intellectual heritage of the West, crafted with the belief that engaging with these works is foundational to a genuine education. While the world has changed significantly since Hutchins and Adler embarked on their ambitious project, the core tenets they championed remain invaluable. In the face of the 21st century's unique challenges, the great books offer tools for critic the Great Conversation is a foundational essay penned by Robert M. Hutchins, which serves as the introduction to the Great Books of the Western World series. In it, Hutchins eloquently articulates the importance and enduring relevance of the Western canon to society. Here's a concise summary of this seminal work. The Great Conversation by Robert M. Hutchins at its core, the Great Conversation extols the virtues of a liberal education, defined by Hutchins as an engagement with the great ideas of Western civilization. Through the study of classic works, individuals immerse themselves in a continuing dialogue that spans millennia, a conversation about the most enduring questions of human existence. The Essence of the Great Conversation Hutchins begins by explaining the nature of the great conversation. This conversation is not linear, but instead a complex web of ideas, arguments, and counter-arguments that have persisted across generations. It represents the collective endeavor of humanity to understand itself and the world. Key figures in history, 
from philosophers to scientists to poets, contribute their voices challenging, expanding, or refining ideas. The Importance of Tradition For Hutchins, tradition is not about preserving the old for its sake, but about recognizing the cumulative wisdom and knowledge that has been amassed over time. He argues against the idea of discarding the past, believing that in the Western tradition we find the building blocks of our culture, our values, and our modes of inquiry. The role of the classics. The classics are central to the great conversation. Hutchins contends that these works, whether from ancient Greece or the Renaissance, possess a timelessness. They grapple with universal themes and questions that remain relevant irrespective of the era. The classics provide the foundation and framework for understanding contemporary issues, drawing from a deep well of historical, philosophical and cultural context. Education and its purpose. For Hutchins, the primary purpose of education is to cultivate an individual's intellectual and moral faculties. This stands in contrast to the utilitarian view that education's main goal is to prepare students for careers or to impart specific skills. A liberal education grounded in the study of the classics serves to nurture the mind, enabling individuals to think critically, reason ethically, and appreciate the beauty and complexity of human thought. Challenges to the Great Conversation Hutchins acknowledges that there are challenges and criticisms to the idea of the Great Conversation. Some argue that the Western canon is exclusionary or that it upholds the status quo. Others believe that the modern world has outgrown the classics, rendering them obsolete. However, Hutchins counters these criticisms by emphasizing the adaptability and expansiveness of the Great Conversation. While the canon may have its origins in specific cultures or periods, its ideas transcend boundaries. Furthermore, the conversation is not static. It evolves incorporating new voices and perspectives even as it remains rooted in foundational principles. The Great Books as a Gateway, the Great Books of the Western World series, for Hutchins, represents a gateway to the Great Conversation. These curated texts offer readers a structured entry point, guiding them through the intricate tapestry of ideas that form the backbone of Western thought. By engaging with these works, individuals not only gain knowledge, but also develop the capacity for introspection, dialogue, and understanding. Conclusion The Great Conversation is a passionate defense of the liberal arts and the enduring importance of the Western canon. Hutchins champions the idea that through the study of the classics we engage with the very essence of humanity, the struggles, aspirations, debates and discoveries that have shaped our trajectory. Far from being mere relics, these works are vital instruments that inform our present, connect us to our past and guide our future. In a world marked by rapid change and uncertainty, the Great Conversation offers a touchstone anchoring us to the timeless questions and insights that define the human experience.